On-the-scene coverage of ACC 13 is supported by Janssen Pharmaceuticals, Incorporated. Hello, I'm Tony DiMaria from UC San Diego, and I'm here with uh, uh, Dr. Paul Douglas from Atlanta, Georgia, and we're at ACC 13 in San Francisco, a great city to be in, a fabulous meeting with lots of new information. And Paul, one of the interesting studies uh, here at the meeting related to the treatment of pulmonary embolism. Absolutely, and this was an interesting trial, the PITHO trial. Uh, that looked at um, uh, the benefit of thrombolysis in patients who were presenting with pulmonary embolism who were at intermediate risk. And so what they did is they looked at patients to see if we could characterize those folks who might benefit from thrombolytic therapy. And so these were patients not who came in who were normal tensive with an intermediate um, risk for dying from pulmonary embolism with RV dysfunction, uh, and positive biomarker. Troponin was the biomarker that they used. And they looked to see if therapy with thrombolytic, uh, therapy with thrombolytics could improve their clinical outcome. Yeah, so an important group. Uh, many patients come in with pulmonary embolism and they're in this intermediate category. They have some RV dysfunction, maybe an elevated troponin. And, and, and the question is, do you move ahead with thrombolysis in those patients or do you treat them with heparin, treat them conservatively? This was a pretty big study, as I recall. It, it, it was, and they randomized those folks that they identified as being in this intermediate risk to just with to thrombolytic therapy with TNK uh, versus the usual heparin therapy in the other group. What were the results, Paul? Well, it was an interesting. They had a composite primary endpoint, and that was death plus hemodynamic collapse. And so if you look at the composite endpoint, uh, it was positive in favor of thrombolytic therapy, uh, primarily driven, though, by the lack of hemodynamic collapse. And so, and they looked at the endpoint at seven days. So if you came in, you were normotensive to start, you were in this intermediate risk category, and you got thrombolytic therapy, if you look at the primary endpoint of death plus hemodynamic collapse, it was positive. Uh, primarily, though, driven by the lack of hemodynamic uh, yeah. Now, hemodynamic, hemodynamic collapse really wasn't shock. It, it was primarily hypotension, hypotension for at least 15 minutes uh, or, or requiring a vasopressor. But in fact, it, it wasn't shock, and, and that hypotension didn't seem to affect mortality, did it? it? Exactly. Not at all. Not at all. Now, the flip side of thrombolysis is, is bleeding, of course, and, and that's a major worry, particularly stroke. Absolutely, and that's what they saw, because there was a price that had to be paid for the use of thrombolytic therapy, and there was a significant both um, non-fatal as well as significant severe hemor hemorrhage uh, and stroke, of course, intracerebral hemorrhage being the major uh, um, downside for using a thrombolytic therapy. Yeah, and this, this was uh, particularly in the elderly individuals over 75 years of age. Uh, uh, they stratified their patients, interestingly enough, uh, younger or older than 75 years of age, and uh, the benefit was more marked in the younger age group, a bit less in the elderly. Absolutely, and so I think that that's the lesson that we learn here, is that younger people tend to do better, uh, 75 was the cutoff. Beyond 75, you have to accept a significant uh, bleeding risk associated with this particular therapeutic approach. Yeah, and those patients are probably better for, for mechanical therapy. The older patients will do better with thrombectomy, I'm sure. Exactly. But a very exactly. useful study in a, in a frequently encountered group of, of patients with intermediate risk in pulmonary embolism. Absolutely. You know, and we, we have this clinical challenge uh, often that we don't know what's the best thing to do uh, for these patients. And I think that this trial helps to clarify this issue for us, helping us understand with the proviso, though, that we're going to have to accept an additional bleeding risk associated with lytic therapy. Yeah, an important study. I quite yeah. agree.
Thanks very much for watching.